Hi there students! Welcome back again to another video lesson for Grade 7 Mathematics, Quarter 4. So we are now on our last uh, video lesson for this week. So since na-discuss na natin yung mean and median of group data, so we'll now move on to mode of group data. So for our lesson objective, we will calculate the measures of central tendency of group data Specifically, mode of group data. So, yung mode natin, this is the most frequently occurring value in a set of data. Okay, so usually dun sa uh, measures of central tendency upon group data, so hindi natin talaga siya sinosold. Dahil, tinitignan lang natin kung alin dun sa value, sa mga values, given values, yung nag occur na most frequent. Okay, so... Unlike yung mean and median, kailangan talaga natin silang isolve. So, dito ipapakita natin kapag group data siya, kung paano siya sinosolve. So, let us have mode of group data. So, the first step in solving the mode of group data is to determine the modal class. So, basically, the modal class is the class which contains the highest frequency. Okay, so since, di ba, mode is the most frequently occurring uh, value in a set of data, so pag group data na po ang pinag-uusapan natin, we'll, we'll just determine the class, the particular class wherein meron siyang pinakamataas na frequency. Okay, so that will be the value of the modal class. Okay, so doon natin madedetermine agad. Hindi katulad ng median, yung n Total frequency, di-divide muna natin siya sa 2. And then, meron tayong cumulative frequency column. So, dito, pinakamadali siya. Basta, determine lang natin yung class, particular class na may pinakamataas na frequency. That will be the modal class. So, let us now have mode of group data. So, how do we calculate the mode of group data? So, yeah, syempre, we will use this formula. So, mean x bar. Sa so, ano naman, median yung x na wave, parang x wave siya. So, dito yung parang may hat siya. Ayan. So, yan po yung symbol for mode. So, the formula, ayan. So, as you can see, meron dyan nakikita parang triangle. So, that is delta 1. Okay. So, sa ibang mga books, makikita nyo sila as d sub 1, d sub 2. So, explain natin yung formula na yan, kung paano siya nagwa-work. So, yung i, ganun pa rin naman. So, ayan, yun yung symbol for mode. And then, lb, that will be the lower boundary of the modal class. So, dun sa median, yung lower boundary, mak um, makikita siya, madedetermine siya kapag meron na tayong median class. So, same with mode. So, dito, modal class muna para madetermine natin lower boundary. And then, paano natin kukunin yung delta 1? Okay, so D sub 1. So, the difference between the frequency of the modal class and the frequency of the next lower class. So, since na-determine na natin yung modal class, so yung frequency po nun, isusubtract natin sa kanya yung frequency ng mas mababang class, yung kasunod niya. Next, D sub 2 naman, the difference between the frequency of the modal class and the frequency of the next upper class. So, dito naman, kabaligtaran. So, yung next upper class naman, yun ang isusubtract natin sa kanya. Okay. So, let us apply the formula for mode of group data. So, our example is, the table below shows the weight in kilograms of 30 residents of St. Lucia Village. Find the mode. Okay, so pag-uusapan natin dito is timbang. So, expressed in kilograms. So, ito yung ating data. So, first column, we have weight. Yung weight, weight natin na nakalagay dyan, naka-express po yan in kilograms. And then, yung frequency on the second column. So, determine the modal class and calculate the mode. Okay, so dito wala tayong less than cumulative frequency column. So, let us have uh, 
the frequency distribution table again. So, dito, yung interval po natin is 10. So, I hope as of this moment, alam na po natin kung paano uh, dinedetermine yung interval kung given yung ating frequency distribution table. And then, yung uh, frequency natin, ayan, on the second column, yung n is equal to 30. So, i-add lang po natin lahat yan. So, 3 hanggang 1. And then, we'll get 30. Next, determine the modal class. Okay. So, ayan, nakikita nyo na agad yung formula dyan. Kasi, madali lang naman i-identify yung modal class. Ito po yung uh, class na may pinakamataas na frequency. And based from this table, yung modal class po natin is 61 to 70. Sir, bakit po yan ang modal class? It's because ang kanyang frequency ay 11. Out of the frequencies, siya yung pinakamataas. Therefore, yung 61 to 70 ang tinatawag nating modal class. Okay. Let us now apply the formula. Kasi makukuha na natin yung lower boundary. So, yung lower boundary po dito, so, from 61 to 70, kukunin natin yung 61. And then, magsusubtract tayo sa kanya ng 0.5. Kasi siya yung lower class. Lower class limit. So, magiging 60.5. Plus, ayan na, delta 1. Okay. So, yung frequency ng modal class natin is 11. And then, yung next lower class natin is 51 to 60. And then, yung frequency niya is 7. So, ang gagawin natin, 11 minus 7 will get 4. Over yung delta 1, that is 4, plus delta 2 naman, di sub 2. So, yung next upper class, nung 61 to 70, is 71 to 80. So, ang frequency naman niya is 6. So, 11 minus 6, we have 5. Times the interval, 10. Next, 60.5 plus 4 over the sum of 4 and 5 is 9. Diba? Times 10. 60.5 plus uh, 4 over 9. So, kailangan natin i-divide yung 4 sa 9. So, kapag dinivide natin yon ang makukuha natin sagot is 0 0.4 repeating. So, repeating digit natin is 4. So, approximately 0 0.44. Ayan. Times 10. 60.5 plus so the product of 0 0.44 and 10 is 4.4 and then add lang natin 60.5 plus 4.4 will get 64.9 so ito po yung ating uh, nakuhang mode Okay, ibig sabihin, yung weight ng weight in kilograms ng 30 students is 64.9. So, yung 64.9 na yan, pasok po siya dun sa modal class natin na 61 to 70. And then next naman, so the table below shows the third quarter grades of 45 students of grade 7 Mabini. So, dito grades naman ang ating pag-uusapan. So, ayan. So, makikita natin dyan yung uh, highest grade, highest possible grade na pwedeng makuha ng student is 100. Then, the lowest grade is 74, which is a failing grade. Okay. So, next. So, next, determine the modal class and calculate the mode. So, yung modal class po natin, dito yung class with the highest frequency. And that is 89 to 91. It's because the frequency is 13. Siya lang po kasi yung may 2 digit dun sa frequency. So, yan po ang magsisilbing modal class. Now, let us calculate the mode. So, yung lower boundary natin dyan is 89 minus 0.5. That will be 88.5. 
plus delta 1. So, d sub 1, so, yun yung difference ng modal, frequency ng modal class, tsaka yung frequency ng next lower class. And that is 86 to 88. So, yung frequency niya is 2. So, that is 13 minus 2 will have 11. And then, uh, 11 plus yung d sub 2 naman, ito yung difference ng frequency ng modal class natin. And then, the next upper class. So, yung next upper class natin is yung 92 to 94 na ang frequency ay 6. So, 13 minus 6 will have 7. And our interval is 3. So, 88.5 plus 11 over the sum of 11 and 7 is 18 times 3. So, i-divide natin yung 11 sa 18. Ang makukuha nating sagot is 0 0.61. I-multiply ngayon natin sa 3. So, 88.5 plus the product of 0 0.61 and 3 is 1.83. So, i-add lang natin yung 88.5 tsaka 1.83. So, yung sum natin is 90.33. So, with, this will be the value of the mode. So, ibig sabihin, ang mga students, ma, most of the students got a grade of 90. Okay, so wala naman kasi makakakuha ng 90.33. Okay, so sakto kasi yan. So kaya, pwede natin siyang i-round up as 90. So ayan, most of the students got a score, uh, a grade of 90. So up next, after measures of central tendency, another uh, statistical measures will be discussed. This time, we will be discussing measures of variability. Okay, so kung anong difference ng central tendency sa variability is makikita nyo po yan as we go along with our discussion. So, una muna natin i-discuss kasi apat po yan is yung range and average deviation and then yung variance and standard deviation. So, ang pinakamadali sa lahat ng measures of variability na yan is yung range. Because Range is just the difference between the highest score and the lowest score. So, na-discuss ko na po yan dun sa organizing data in a frequency distribution table. Nung nag-construct tayo ng frequency distribution table, kinailangan kong i-discuss yung range na yon, kasi kailangan talaga siya. So, yun lang. Maraming salamat.